So many times I've heard the objection, I'm very uncoordinated, I can't do Zumba. No, st stop it, I don't want to listen. You might say, I don't like Zumba, or I prefer a less cardio workout. But nobody should avoid doing Zumba just because they don't know the steps. So today I'm going to explain how to dance some of the most famous Zumba steps. Before we dig into it, let me disclaim a couple of things. Disclaimer number one, this video does not in any way substitute the proper Zumba basics training that you can purchase on Zumba.com. It's really two different things. In the Zumba basics training, you learn the Zumba formula, the names of each step, the arm and fitness variations, and you qualify as a Zumba instructor. Here I just want to give a hand to those who are curious or interested in trying a Zumba class, but they've never danced in their lives and they have no idea of what to do with their body, with their legs and their arms. That's all. Disclaimer number two. There are definitely so many rhythms that you could dance in a Zumba class, but we can't stay here for hours and see each one of them. You wouldn't need it anyway, because once I will tell you what to hear and what to consider in the main rhythms, you will be able to apply the same concepts to any other rhythm. Cool, huh? Let's go! Unless your Zumba instructor is gone crazy and will add to the playlist a waltz a 3-4 time like da 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 one two three one two three one two three all the songs that you will hear in a Zumba class are based on the common time of 4-4 four, four. one two three four one two three four now if you have a background in music you're used to counting four beats one two three four but if you have a background in dancing you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Basically, you count two bars instead of one. Although it would make more sense to count eight beats because Zumba is a dance fitness program, I will give you the option to count four beats instead because I reckon that many more people have studied music at school, for example, and hopefully this will make things easier. Remember, this is not a video for expert dancers. It's a video for those who don't know how to dance. For each rhythm I'm going to address 1. The beats specific to that rhythm 2. The main steps of that rhythm 3. How to balance your weight while you do the steps Let's start with the easiest rhythm Merengue It sounds like The image that I have in mind when I think of merengue is crushing the grapes with the feet 1. Beats In merengue you just do one, two, one, two. Like a march. You alternate right foot and left foot. And that's it. Right, left, right, left. The dance beats are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In four, one, two, three, four. Super easy. Two steps. You can march one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can move forward and backwards. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You could do a diagonal step. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or sidewards. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You could do a V step. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You could do a square. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Do you see the corners of the square? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Many times you will see this side step. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, that on the last four stops and start with the other foot. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The only complicated step in merengue is when we go side and then cross. One, two, three, four, 
One, two, three, four. Let me show you the step slowly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, balance. Balancing your weight in merengue is really easy. Your weight is on one foot, then on the other. Let's see the balance in the hardest step. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. My weight moves from one foot to the other. Let's go with salsa. It sounds like... If you hear Las Claves, it's likely to be salsa. Las Claves is a percussion. Those two sticks that sound like... Salsa reminds me of the sensual movements of the sea waves. One, beats. Every salsa teacher will tell you that the steps are one, two, three, you stop on four, five, six, seven, and stop on eight. So the dance beats are one, two, three, five, six, seven. In four, you can say that the beats are one and two, three and four. You pretend you're going, but then you come back. Pretend you're going and come back. Two steps. You can do a side step. One and two, three and four. The same step applies if you do it frontal. One and two, three and four. One foot goes forward, the other one goes backwards. One and two, three and four. You can have the side one, but instead of having the foot going on the side, it goes at the back. One and two, three and four. Three, balance. Knowing the balance in salsa is crucial because of that pretend but come back. Let's say that you start from the base and then one foot goes somewhere else, front, side or back. The other foot is an anchor that keeps you attached to the base. You transfer a little bit of your weight on the moving foot but you're immediately going back to the anchor. One and two three and four. Cha-cha-cha! This rhythm is not a basic one, but since it's a kind of mix of both merengue and salsa, I thought it would be nice to mention it. It sounds like... And in my mind it's the easy-going version of tango. If you're not as technical as a tango dancer, but still want to enjoy a sensual dance, you go with cha-cha-cha. One, beats. In eight beats you would count one, two, three and four, five, six, seven and eight. In four beats, it's simply one, two, three and four, where the three and four are the characteristic cha-cha-cha. One, two, cha-cha-cha. Same thing. In one, two, you do exactly what you would do in a salsa, so pretend you're going, but come back. In three and four, you alternate the feet like in merengue. Cha, cha, cha. One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. Two steps. If you move in a direction, you do it during the three and four. And many times in one, two, you go to the opposite direction. So if you want to go forward and backwards, start by pretending you're going backwards but then come back to the anchor and then walk forwards during the cha-cha-cha. So, one, two, three and four. To go back, do the opposite. Attempt to go further, but no, now we are going back. So, one, two, three and four. If I want to go sidewards with the same kind of step, I have two options. The attempt can either be in the opposite diagonal at the front or at the back. So let me show you the front version. One, two, three and four. Going back. One, two, three and four. Or using the back diagonal. One, two, three and four. Then go back. One, two, three and four. Three, balance. 
Use the same anchor of salsa. Just transfer a little bit of weight, but be ready to immediately go back to the base and do your cha-cha-cha. Now let's talk about reggaeton, the Latin version of hip-hop. It sounds like... In my mind, it's the groove of a big subwoofer's cone, full of energy, but not cheerful. One, beats. In reggaeton, the accent is not on one, like the other dances, but on end, so the space between the beats. In eight beats, you count it, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. In four beats, it's and one, and two, and three, and four. Many times the groove will drag you down, not up. And one, and two, and three, and four. Two steps. Many times you will see the typical side stomp. And one, and two, and three, and four. Then you change the step and go on the other side. And one, and two, and three, and four. But other times you will just find yourself on the bass with two options. The first one is step, step, double. So, and one, and two, and three, and four. Let's do it again. And one, and two, and three, and four. The other leg. And one, and two, and three, and four. But you can also take the knee up. And one, and two, and three, and four. Let's do two bars. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. You can walk forwards squatting a little bit. And one, and two, and three, and four. And backwards. And one, and two, and three, and four. The most complicated step, in my opinion, is when you bounce sideways. In this step, you do one knee up, other knee up, and then walk to the side. Let's do it slowly. And one, and two, and three, and four. Go back. And one, and two, and three, and four. Three, balance. In reggaeton, your balance is low, consistent with the attitude of this rhythm. Many times you are either bouncing around or solidly anchored to the floor. Be ready to change your balance very quickly from one foot to the other. Finally, we have cumbia, the fourth of the basic Zumba rhythms. It sounds like... The image I have in mind is those traditional Latin American costumes, big, colorful gowns that smoothly move around with the music. One, beats. Cumbia is as easy as merengue. One, two, three, four. What's the difference between the two? Basically, cumbia has one lazy leg that follows the other. Let's see it in the steps. Two steps. When you stay on the base, only one foot does the job. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The march in merengue is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But cumbia is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When you do the sidewalk, the foot at the back pushes you to go forward, so the other foot goes. Of course, the hips help you a lot, but I'm not talking about hips and arms on purpose, because the priority are the feet. Once you get the feet, adding arms and hips is easier. Let's see this walk. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very often you will see a diagonal or opposite step. One, two, three, four. You see the lazy leg? Let's do two measures. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Finally, the machete. Machete. You're cutting sugar canes. One, two, three, four. The only work of the lazy leg is to turn on the toes just a little bit so that you don't hurt your knee. Let's see it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three. Balance. Your weight will stay for the most part of it on the lazy leg. Still, 
Kumbia is a joyful dance, so you will bounce a bit and you can give this bounce by giving a bit more energy to the active foot. For example, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I wanted to mention Samba too, but this video would get incredibly long. Furthermore, Samba is a little bit trickier than the other rhythms, even for instructors. Many instructors don't do Samba at all. So I reckon that if your instructor is confident enough to add a Samba to the playlist, they will be able to explain how to dance it. Let me just add a couple of tips. One, listen to the music. Zumba steps work in synergy with the music. Meaning that the music is not just there to give you a pace, but the steps will correspond to a specific part of the song. The verse, the chorus, the bridge or a special part. Every time there's a chorus, the instructor is definitely going to do the same steps of the previous chorus. There will be variations maybe, but the basic step is the same. So, follow the structure of the song and you will be able to anticipate the steps. 2. Look at the directions. The possible directions are you stay on the bass, you go forward and backwards, on one side and then come back, diagonal or turn. If you are completely lost, figure out where the instructor is going first. Then see which foot they use and where's the balance. 3. Check the toes. This is very important because sometimes your instructor will do the step staying on the toes so that the knees don't get hurt. As Zumba instructors, we are not supposed to explain the steps at the beginning or during the songs. That's why we don't use the microphone in Zumba. Cueing stay on your toes is not the easiest thing to do without misunderstandings, so make sure you check the instructor's feet. Four. You will get used to use your body to add the flavor. The hips, the arms, the bust and shoulders, the groove. Don't rush into doing exactly what the instructor is doing. Make sure you understand the step first. The rest will come with a little bit of practice. On this note, let me add. Give it time. Would you expect to be able to speak a foreign language after only one lesson? I don't think so. Same goes with dancing skills. I made another video on how to survive your first Zumba class. Make sure you check it out. I hope I was clear enough. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you have any other tricks to do the basic steps. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share this video with any of your friends who would like to try or understand the Zumba basic steps. Stay safe. Ciao.